Welcome back. Since independence in 1960, the Nigerian judiciary has done a lot to keep the country together. But the judiciary itself is struggling to secure its autonomy, especially financially. In this next report, we highlight some of the issues militating against this objective. At independence in 1960, the Nigerian judiciary attained the status of an independent arm of government, which led to the establishment of the Supreme Court as the apex court of the land. The irony, however, is that even though the judiciary came into existence before the country attained independence, the third arm of government is still searching for its independence from the other two arms of government. There's no doubt that the period of military rule negatively impacted on the judiciary. The period witnessed wanton disregard of the rule of law and democratic principles, indiscriminate dismissal of judicial officers, and open disobedience of judicial pronouncements. To some extent, the return of democratic rule in 1999 brought back some vibrancy and courage to the judiciary as several landmark decisions were given by the court. But at the root of the independence of the judiciary is the perennial problem of funding. Overworked underpaid, uh, ill-appreciated, and discarded. That is my summation of the Nigerian judiciary. They are doing well, considering the resources, like I have said countless number of times. The Nigerian judiciary is about the only one that still takes evidence in long hand. Do you know the number of cases that the Supreme Court have to contend with in a year? <laughs> Almost all the, the largest in, uh, the, the, the world across the globe. And how many justices do you have in the Supreme Court? What are the facilities available to the Supreme Court justices? Go back to the High Court. Go and look at the High Courts. Look at the High Court of Lagos State. How many judges do they have? How many cases do they deal with in a year, or in a month? What are the facilities available to them? You have to invest in the judiciary if you want the best from the judiciary. You have to, uh, you have to engage, you have to recruit the best of lawyers. And the best of lawyers will not go to the bench if there's no attractive uh, the, the facilities. To underscore the importance of funding and judicial autonomy, President Mohamed Buhari on May 22nd signed the Presidential Executive Order No. 10 of 2020. The order is for the financial autonomy of the state legislature and the state judiciary. The federal government said that the president signed the order based on the power vested in him under Section 5 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, which extends to the execution and maintenance of the Constitution, including but not limited to Section 121 subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution, which guarantees financial autonomy of the states. This power is, however, being challenged as the 36 states of the Federation have gone before the Supreme Court to contest the President's executive order. Closely trailing the challenge of funding are allegations of corruption in the judiciary. Most of the judicial officers whose homes were raided on October 7, 2017 by operatives of the Department of State Services DSS have been freed by the courts and the few cases which are still pending are moving at snail speed. There has to be strict timelines for litigation. The judges blame the lawyers, the lawyers blame the judges. Come on, the, lawyer, the judge is the master of his court. So there are things that can be done, technology. You can, you can, you can bring in digital transformation to, to, to disrupt how we do cases. Why would lawyers go before Mr. Justice X in the Federal High Court and they're all lining up? Because in 1835, some law lords said, take notice that your matter shall be heard at 9 o'clock or so soon thereafter in the forenoon. And thereafter, and so all of us come at 9. Some juniors get their cases ahead at 4. Why don't you create a, a time? 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, that's one thing. The other thing, when Justice Belgore, ex-CGN, was chair of the Speed of Justice Committee of the NJC, I was deputy. We found out that 70% of the cases that go to court should not be there. There is no filtering, there is no administrability rules, there is no punishment. People are not damned in costs. If you file a rubbish case, huh, 
<laughs> in the UK. You will be liable to pay costs. Delay in court proceedings, over reliance on legal technicalities, high cost of litigation, and the cherry picking by the executive and legislature on which court orders to obey are some other issues confronting the judiciary 60 years after independence. 60 years. The Nigerian judiciary is not as agile as it used to be, but it can be, and we should do everything to make sure it is agile, responsive, and delivers justice every time. With the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the judiciary must also fully embrace advancements made in science and technology, upgrade its facilities so that it can continue to play the important role of discharging justice with sincerity. And just before we go, here's a recap of some other legal stories we're tracking. We we'll begin with the report that the Court of Appeal has affirmed the return of Senator Doye Diri as Governor of Bayelsa State. The Court upturned the August 17, 2020 verdict of the state's governorship election petition tribunal that had sacked the governor from office and ordered fresh polls to be conducted within 90 days. A five-man panel of the Court of Appeal, led by Justice Adesi Lam Mshelia, set aside the tribunal's verdict and affirmed Diri's election in its judgment delivered on Friday. The three-man election petition tribunal sitting in Abuja had, on a split decision of two to one, nullified the polls owing to the unlawful exclusion of the advanced Niger Democratic Party and its candidate, King George, from the exercise. But the Court of Appeal said the ANDP was not unlawfully excluded from the election. From Abuja, we moved to Kaduna, where the State High Court has dismissed a no-case submission filed by the embattled leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki, and his wife, Zinat. The couple is standing trial on eight counts of culpable homicide, unlawful assembly, and disruption of public peace, among other allegations. They had pleaded not guilty and asked the court to quash the charge against them for lack of evidence, as they insisted that no case had been made against them. At the last sitting of the court on August 7, their counsel had submitted that the charge did not disclose any offence known to law. Justice Gideon Kurada, in his ruling, dismissed the no-case submission on the grounds that it is premature, especially in view of certain provisions of the Kaduna State Administration of Criminal Justice Act. A judge specifically held that such an application ought to be decided after the defendant might have taken their plea and after hearing on the whole matter has been concluded. Our next report also comes from the north, specifically in Borno State, where a Nigerian army corporal has been sentenced to five years in prison by a military court martial after he was found guilty of defiling a 13-year-old girl in Bama local government area of the state. Besides the five-year sentence, the court martial also dismissed the corporal. A 7th Division General Court Martial of Operation Lafia Dole had charged the officer for assault and defilement of a 13-year-old who had nearly returned to her hometown after years of displacement in Maiduguri. During a trial which lasted over two years, the prosecution had described in graphic details how Corporal Yakubu waylaid and raped the minor, abandoned her in an uncompleted building after beating her to unconsciousness. A survivor who later gained consciousness staggered out and was cited by a passerby who helped her home. Upon investigation, military authorities identified the suspect who had a ready-made alibi claiming that he had traveled out of Bama town at the time of the incident. But a book of record of military passes which was tendered at exhibit strengthened the case of the prosecution that the accused person traveled the very day of the incident as stated by the investigating officer. The president of the court martial, Brigadier General Arikwe Kubi, while handling the judgment, described the action of the corporal as barbaric and capable of dragging the name of the Nigerian army in the mud. The dismissed soldier broke down in tears as he was escorted out of the courtroom. And we round off with the report that a commercial court in London has ordered the release to Nigeria of a sum of $200 million used as a deposit in the case against Process and Industrial Development, PNID. The governor of the central bank, Governor Nemefile, who confirmed the development, said the ruling follows the establishment of a prima facie fraud before the court. The court also rejected PNID's application to increase the guarantee, which was clearly intended to be a diversionary tactic and entirely misconceived. The ruling is a further and significant victory for Nigeria in its quest to overturn the $10 billion award allegedly procured through fraud and corruption by PNID and some former government officials. 
And here's where we adjourn till next week. Don't forget that you can watch again this episode of the program and past episodes on our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shieli. Thank you for watching.